Hi, I'm Karen Hendricks. In this video, I present a 21st century definition of compassion, which if we embody as music teachers, we can help our students reach the highest levels of musical performance. Hope you enjoy. So here are some varying definitions of compassion on one end of the spectrum to the other. Um, before we start, com, Latin, with. So that's where we're coming from. That's close to con, right? Also, so with. On one end of the spectrum, and this is an old school definition of compassion. Passion, like St. Matthew's passion, suffering, right? So you suffer with someone. Oh, it's grief, it's horrible, oh, I'm so sorry. On the other extreme, today we think of passion as excitement. So in this definition, we have passion, excitement with our students. We're sharing with, not passion or excitement about our students, not passion or excitement about the music, which of course we all have, but it's something a little more intimate and relational. I'm sharing that passion with Gary. It's not just, yeah, Gary did it, yeah, but it's, we did it, Gary. We did it. It's much more personal. So in this old version, there's an unequal relationship. We're pitying a student, right? And we have a hero. We have a superior who is reaching down to help the, the poor. Right? As opposed to over here where we have an equal relationship. It's symbiotic. Each of us bring different strengths. So I may um, say, Gary, here's what I have to offer to you. What do you have to offer to me? And we share this shared excitement, shared passion, shared enthusiasm. So that's where I'm going. And that's important to understand that it's not about pity. It's not about rescuing. It's not about feeling bad for and just, you know, giving someone a, a, a break. It's about being present in the moment and doing all you can. As so many of you have beautifully said this week, it's meeting students where they're at. Many of you have said that. So, as I say in chapter one, compassionate music teaching is not weakness. It's not giving in. It's not letting students walk all over you. That's not compassionate. <laughs> that's, that's chaos, right? <laughs> but what it is, is it's focusing on shared goals that we've communicated about. It's believing in the highest and the best potential in every student, right? It's honesty. It's being specific. It's being able to say, Gary, I'm picking on you today, <laughs> front and center. It's, Gary, we had these shared goals. What are you thinking? We didn't quite get there, did we? What can we do about this? You know, some of that inquiry that Richard was talking about this morning, where we're, we're actually sharing this and, and talking about strengths, weaknesses, and being specific because we're compassionate, because we care. Compassionate music teaching, this is one of the questions that we had before, is not getting overly caught up in students' lives. That's not compassion, that's fixation. That's unhealthy teaching. That's, that's maybe at home, I need to take care of myself a little bit more so I'm not so reliant on my students um, to give me energy and joy in every day, right? So I'm healthy, I take care of myself, so I don't have to rely on my students to give me joy, right? So I'm not totally getting lost in their stuff. And we'll talk, if we have time, about that when we talk about empathy a little bit later today, okay? Compassionate music teaching is not impossible when you have ed TPA and, <laughs> um, and when you have certain uh, parameters that your administrators are, are uh, putting upon you. It's not impossible with this definition and what we'll talk about today. In fact, there's research that tells us that the higher the trust is in a learning environment, the higher the achievement. So if we are creating a space of trust, we're creating a space of achievement. 
And compassion is grounded in trust. Compassion is flexible. It's being creative because we're meeting at the same place and we're figuring out a way, much as we've been talking about with culturally uh, responsive pedagogy as well.